Good morning, everyone. Well, it will be my lonesome self today. Simmer's having a day off, so hopefully everyone here isn't bored today. So today is Friday, and you know what we say about Fridays is to take it easy. Good morning, everyone. So we're gonna take it easy. It will be my lonesome self today. Oh wow. Simmer's having a day off, so. I can hear myself speak. Hopefully, well, it's not here good. Isn't bored today. So today is Friday, and you know what we say about Fridays is to take it easy. Morning, everyone. Morning, everyone. So we're gonna take it easy. It'll be my lonesome self today. Oh, wow. so we're just having a day off, so I can hear myself speak. Sorry about that. I was just wondering why I was going to hear an echo of myself, but now I get it, which is all good. All right, so um, let's do a top-down analysis of Euro USD. Let's see if there's an opportunity here, but I mean, like I said, it's Friday. Let's just chill out on that and uh, see what the market's going to give us. Now let's look at the weekly. Weekly we're still in a very bullish structure. It's not as strong, but I mean then again, if you look um, to your left here, we have a big area of traffic and I mean we just need to really make it out this area first before I would see a continuation of this move. So I mean I don't, I see why it's kind of hesitant, it's kind of hit like what is it? It's hit kind of like a wall. But that does happen. Because nothing goes up all the time. Now, I mean, weekly, I'm... Let's just say I'm 70% sure that this week's going to end off bullish. But I mean, there's still that 30% chance we're going to see the markets drop. Um, but see on that front let's look at the daily now now daily we're in a bullish structure we're actually in the range of sorts here you have a top you have a bottom now don't forget we do have news coming out here uh, in about nine minutes 
for retail sales month over month and retail sales month over month. What do I think about it? I don't know. I mean, it's probably going to start averaging kind of like being at a normal range now. So in that front, that's probably just going to chill. And are you going to see a really big move? Uh, I think the big moves for these news is, has already happened. I mean, we've had the worst and kind of like the best news. <laughs> what I mean by that is the worst here in April, or sorry, in May. April and May, and then the best in June and July. And I think it's going to start returning back into the normal kind of 1%, 2% type of deal. So I don't really see anything of a big change that's going to warrant our need. I warrant the markets anyways to fly 100 pips or go down 100 pips. Okay, now daily, I think it's going to fill this way. I do think, like I mentioned, the weekly is going to finish bullish, but anything could happen. The news might actually change that. Four hours, very interesting. Uh, four hours, looks like we've had this nice liquidity grab here. Is if you look at two big wicks and the current wick that we're on, um, is a very large wick, I would say. So there's a lot of demand I can see it at the 1800 level. So I do think that we might see uh, a break upwards, to be honest with you. And then, okay, let's look at the hour. <clears throat> well, this was the four hour wick that we saw, and we're building on momentum. I do see that maybe we're gonna break 1820s. If we do, we have a clean path, I would say, to at least 1840s. So that will probably be my first target. But like I said, today is a uh, Friday. So are we gonna really steamroll the markets? Probably not. Um, we'll just take it easy and see if there's an opportunity that presents itself. He is also here. Here's another level that we have to be uh, wary of that didn't get pushed through last night. That's also the 20 levels. I mean, yeah, your safest trades is going to be at the 20. It's not going to be here. You actually might see a break up, wick down, and then break up further. So we've got to be patient with this trade. 20 minutes. Okay. 20 looks okay, I guess. We'll see what it does today. I mean, it's news. I'm not really going to touch news or trade the news. It's usually better just wait and see. So I guess the reason why we look at the futures market is just to get a feel of what's happened overnight. I mean, you have uh, the precious metals kind of selling off right here. 
then you have the not so precious metals, not solid all. Similar. I'm gonna have a look at silver. Um, yeah, I wonder what's gonna happen. I mean, I'm still bullish on gold, but I kind of wanted to drop to 1800. You know, take that breather, fill the orders because I wanted to purchase somewhere around 18. I already did at this price right now on the initial drop. I want to see what it dropped to 19. That was aftermarket, but as you can see, we're getting more volatile than not. So, what is this? me when something's actually going. Uh, we have a, if this closes here, we'll have a triple I mean, one thing is, it's news. I honestly don't think there's gonna be. The news usually happens after like 10, 15, 20 minutes. And then that'll be the first initial move. And then by the time everyone figures out where they want to move their money, that's gonna be your second initial move for news events. But it's obvious, people maybe are just tired. You know, you're locked in all the time with COVID, nothing's going on. You can't eat at your favorite restaurants, you can't do the favorite things like play ball. So yeah, I could just, just imagine. Wow. But 50 seconds till the news and then we'll get back into, I mean I'm not gonna really have a full analysis. We'll talk about the news, we'll talk about life. We'll just talk about things. Ten more seconds. Let's see what's gonna happen. Is the world gonna end? Probably the most. Hey, right, shout out to Dylan. Hope you're doing well, Dylan. See you guys, this news was a uh, dud. Hasn't really done much, honestly, but it is what it is. I can't read that every kind of weird. Sorry, what I'm looking is if we can, uh, if I can see it on our site. Oh, yeah. By the way, if you haven't checked out our website, do so. Free content on here, and we're just uh, there's still a lot of work to do, Simmer and I, but I mean, it's enjoying the process. Oh, it works nice. I just have to change the embedding options after.
Since oh, is it moving? Yeah, it's moving a bit. Do I trust this move? Probably not. You look at the volume. I I'm breaking out. I seriously don't trust this move though. Yeah, I'm probably not gonna do much with this move. Retail sales rose for July. 1.2% versus the 2.3% estimate. Oh wow, that's horrible. Is it 2.3%? Forecast. Who's forecasting what? Uh, 7.3% retail sales. Uh, wow, I feel like the numbers just changed on me. Oh well. You have good and bad. It's mixed. I mean, US dollar has been kind of. Well, I mean, if you look at the daily, it's kind of hit a run since May. But uh, then again, if you look at it weekly, Euro's kind of hit a run in the last two years versus the States. And I honestly think this is. We're at the phase of launching to like. 125 for the fact that if you look at the weekly here, we're dating back to March 2015, 16, 17. It hit this kind of demand zone at 105. You had the initial breakup. Now, what I like to see is yeah, we had initial breakdown during COVID times, but it did not hit the supply again. That means that I think the next leg up you'll probably see like the 130s so 500 pips and then you'll see a continuation are we going to move back all the way to like pre 2008 huh, who knows right it's probably going to take a lot of news a lot of fundamental news to drive that up there but oh look at that alert to the moon do I still believe in this eh, not really one thing you could have done see this is the thing it's I think yeah we might break up to here to the 40s yeah I didn't catch it but it going to the 40s I do I think this is real move I still don't I really don't I do think yeah we're gonna be bullish today but kind of yesterday as well build up and then it drop down it's a Friday I don't really think there's gonna be any big home runs even with news and the news honestly isn't really that big of a difference Structures there. Do I see anything? No, not really. Well, we'll take it easy then. Yeah. All right. Now let's look at some news. World shares sink as data points to tepid economic. Revival. Well, I mean, when you have a lockdown of people, it's kind of hard to revive anything. Uh, there go the news dip. Eurozone offer low cheer in investors. Lackluster Chinese economic numbers. What? They didn't fudge their numbers this time? Uh, let's see. Let's go back. Oh, these 
Chinese numbers aren't really that important. Four point three percent. Four times five point four. I mean, though, still it's getting better. It's interesting. Yeah, the lockout for them happened in. Was it March? Yeah. It was Even in 2008, it didn't really affect them. It slowly kind of declined, but in a maturing economy or a growing economy, you would see probably this this growth as like an outlier growth, and it will be reverting back to its mean. But with COVID, yeah, it's probably going to be stuck at some percent. Retail sales, okay. So we have retail sales here. So this is like a second world country. Now you go back to the US and you look at their retail sales month over month. And yeah, you can see what the numbers are. Even when let's stretch this back a bit here with the actuals and without the forecast. Yeah, 2008, you saw a dip here. Not as big of a dip, not as big of a swing up here. So, I mean, in a, see, this is a comparison with a developed economy versus a developing you don't see this big of a swings and i guess the relevance is not as important so it is important for the chinese data not as not so much for the u.s per se unless you see a huge swing okay so there's news at 7 15. laptop is dying of course Okay, let's look at news again. Oh, municipal bonds. See, this is a very interesting thing, I guess. Learning uh, in the CFA and how, I think it was on one bond part. It's that every market you've seen have uh, a revolution in a sense of the electronic market. Well, electronic trading and have exchanges. There's more exchanges now. Um, and there's more finance same of the same financial product traded on different exchanges. So I guess you'll see more of a market fragmentation. Brokerage houses do a great deal of solving that by doing smart routing. Uh, so they'll get you the best price per se. But I just want you to kind of take a look is the only change that hasn't happened. We've had change from the commodities, the stock market. The only thing that hasn't really changed and has been stuck in the 19th century type of deal is the bond market. And now, see, that's a, a hard thing, you know, like with getting your positions out of the bond market is that it's not efficient at all. And like they're using 19th century technology. And don't forget though, you know, you see the Forex market, that's changed by milestones since, like, I mean, 10, 20, 30 years or so. Same as the stock market. The bond market has it. I think that really is a disadvantage for bond traders. And especially now that with yields as low as, low as they are now, um, I know I've heard that a lot of bond traders have lost their jobs just because that the markets don't offer opportunities that they used to pre-2008. So now you have kind of like municipal bonds, which makes sense. It's kind of like, how do you, how do you first pay off? You're not even thinking about paying off debt. I don't think that there's even one government in this day and age that's thinking about reaching a surplus balance or just using the surplus balance to pay off debt. Every country in this world is debt heavy. Now, for institutional investors, they're usually the ones that supply debt, such as like insurance companies, mutual funds. I mean, you do have some hedge funds that do dabble in with 
uh, the bond market here. Uh, private equity, but honestly, though, like, the big moves, the big high rewards, um, the operations that, you know, you don't suffer through, like, a delay cost, opportunity cost, and all that, um, is the stock market relative to the bond market. So, I'm kind of worried to see that if we do have another liquidity crisis, yeah, you have the Fed purchasing um, debt in a sense, but if there is no kind of a universal upgrade with the bond market, I find that it's going to be really hard for it, uh, the bond market, to sustain itself in general because it's being really left out of this rat race anyways, of being able to properly and efficiently deliver financial instruments, the bond itself, to prospects, right? Uh, it's still using a very old system and kind of like, do people want to enter into the debt market? Probably less people are willing to, especially if you have like the stock market giving you double digit returns, why would you go for something that <laughs> you'd rather re receive payments? Yeah, it's less risky in a sense, but municipal bonds have always been riskier than like federal bonds, like um, like T bills, for example. So, definitely a very interesting topic um, about the municipal bonds here. That I kind of want to touch base. Um, now, what was your saying? Stock plunges after. I don't even know what that stock is. Offering stocking prices for the getting taken over or something. So you're saying to yourself that wow, this company is offering their shares priced at a deep discount for six million shares at five eighty five. To raise $35 million. So obviously, okay, if we look at the pecking order theory, so the pecking order theory is first to use your retained earnings to fund projects, then you look for bonds, and the last thing you're going to do is you're going to offer equity. And why would you offer equity at a deeper discount unless you really need it, right? It doesn't make sense why you couldn't sell it at market price. So. I mean, I think that's really kind of fishy of what they say. They say the plan to use the proceeds for working capital, including the commercialization development of chance, a treatment of chronics, uh, clinical development of you know, for the treatment. Thank you. Uh, so many people are trying to get into the COVID game, but honestly. At this point, <clears throat> you already have some big players already into the COVID game. Second of all, like I mentioned earlier on these streams, I think if you're trying to play COVID, you should be playing it. A safer bet is playing the manufacturers in itself than actually of the drug because they're going to have to do the distribution, the logistics, and trying to guess who's going to be the one that develops the COVID vaccine. I think Moderna is phase three, but it's weird too. It's I think they aim to deal with uh, the federal government um, for $1.5 billion for their vaccine. I think you will find some news here. But as you can look, it's been selling off since it reached the highs of, I think, $95. Uh, uh, yeah, U.S. Steel's $1.5 billion deal for 100 million dosages. So it's about $15, I guess, said and done with for each vaccine. Just this was two days ago, and oh, what you guys can't see wrong 
the screen. There you go. So yeah, they reach that there, and then what's interesting is if you look at the price two days ago, we have a, I assume a gap up and then a sell off. So I don't know, even with that kind of news, if this if 60 level breaks and we have like a weekly form per se, I think it'll be a good short because then that means that buyers exhaustion all the speculators are gone now and um if you buy a put if you're kind of worried that this will gap up buy a put for a week or two and i could probably see this tank but uh, let's look at let's look at kodak kodak was supposed to get a loan from the u.s government uh, i think around roughly 800 million dollars to produce ingredients for the vaccine that loan you can see push the price because this price has been plummeted i mean who uses these cameras we have a phone and if you look at the monthly chart this has been a zombie stock of sorts except for this kind of outlier a lot anomaly and honestly i was like thinking to myself when i was looking at this this was not gonna last and obviously i shouldn't have just sat there i, I should have bought a put option if you really think of and especially if you're really kind of going against the herd here and thinking that something's not going to last, but you want to protect your downside, there's going to be call options and put options. So a little bit of a summary of what they are is call options is you're going long on a stock. There's a time limit, and per se, each contract is 100 shares. So they range in different prices. Obviously, if you have more expensive stocks like a Tesla, for example, those call options and there's a couple of factors so options are based off of five principles so it's rio which is the risk-free rate uh theo which is time well this is their delta and gamma which is the sensitivity of price delta is and then gamma really is your measurement of delta and then it's start, another one starts with a b it means volatility i forgot what it's called but all those factors played into the pricing of an option. But the one thing I can't why I bring this up is that if you're gonna play options and stuff versus risky, you're essentially what I will compare it to is like trading penny stocks with options. Uh, second of all too is that it does one benefit I would say, well, let's actually go with another con. There's a time limit to it. So you usually buy options, you have a strike price, so let's say $9.20, you want to say, if you buy a call, then I believe that anything above $9, um, I want to have, I want a secure position just in case, let's just say it's going to go to $20, you can exercise the option so that you will buy 100 shares at $9, for example. Uh, so then you get that quick profit, right? Now, one thing I want to mention is though, it also protects you from the downside as well, because you don't want to put, let's just say it's $9. You don't want to buy hundred shares because it could go down, right? So if you buy an option that, let's just say, uh, expires next Friday, you want to just see if it's going to be, but you don't want to put, because if you buy hundred shares, it's $9 and 20 cents. If it drops another three bucks or what is it 33 percent which honestly looking at this chart can possibly happen is that you won't be caught with that so then if the option let's just say is a hundred dollars right for next week uh expiry day then why wouldn't you because if it does go down you're gonna it's gonna go and essentially you're gonna uh lose three hundred dollars you buy the stock if it does go down to six dollars and you bought an option for a hundred dollars then yeah at most you're gonna lose is a hundred dollars once the option expires right but if it goes up to 15 bucks um yeah you can exercise your option at that point and stuff and you'll get those shares at nine dollars uh per se minus the the fee that you had to pay and the fee i'm talking about is the premium that you paid for that option right is those options go to the person that wrote the options whether it be a call or a put now kind of going back to my idea of what i was going to do is when it was at 50 dollars, i honestly thought i was like this is just a pump and dump ideally speaking i should have bought a put and to minimize my risk what's the worst thing that could happen 
Um, I lose uh, a few hundred dollars on that put option, but the thing is, I thought it was going to drop and drop by quite a bit, which it did. And that's another way you can play it. And the one thing too is you don't really have to exercise those options. You can sell those options for the people that do want to exercise them. Sell those options, and then you'll probably you'll have to pay obviously a commission on selling options as well as buying options. But sell the options, and at that point, your options probably going to be. Let's just say you had I had put at fifty dollars, for example, and um. By the time it was close to expiring, it was the stock was at twenty dollars. So at that point, your option value is probably gonna be, and you probably pay about a dollar or two for that option times it by a hundred is per share. So it'll be a hundred, two hundred dollars for that option. By that time, your pro option's probably looking at around two, three grand, twenty, thirty dollars for that option, right? Times it by a hundred. So, I mean, yeah, it's that's why I call this a penny stock. They are, it is very lucrative in that sense. Um, but, of course, fortunes are made and lost with options as well. So, be careful. This is only usually, only certain circumstances I will play options. And it's really to control risk. Besides that, then, I'd rather just own the stock. Okay, well that was my rant. Let's look at Euro. Yeah, we had the breakout. I mean, if we can close on the 30 minute above here, that's would be nice. Let's look at the smaller time frames here. Five minutes. Find support here. Probably gonna inch up higher, especially if it forms above here, yeah. Do I think? I don't really think anything for this. Because if this forms like that, a wick here. I'm like, this is the minute chart, everyone, so. Yeah. I wouldn't be, uh. Put too much belief on this wick, but. Two minutes. Form soon. It doesn't look good. In the smaller time frames that we're gonna pull back up that was i think the attempt to pull back up let's see how it formed now you've basically on the one minute have a little little resistance area at the 1825 level now if it breaks here yeah i could see this kind of pushing up further we are heading to liquidity around uh 10 o'clock i mean sorry not 10 o'clock i'm going crazy 7 30 so market open so you might see a push in liquidity in that sense, but uh, right now I don't really see anything happening per se. 15 minute looks okay, decent. Market structure hasn't broken. 30 minute, I mean, yeah, we're in the 30 minute. And I think 30 minute, we could see a push up. And on it, like I said, it really depends on kind of the smaller time frames. If you see a breakout on the smaller time frames here at the five minutes, then yeah, you might see a push. But like I said, there on the one minute or the two minute, you have created somewhat of a a resistance at the twenty five level. I wouldn't have any entries until we're probably above here. Um, thirty minutes and it's still closed bullish regardless of that. So you can't really like when you look at this, yeah, thirty minute broke out. But really, it's harder to use thirty minutes. Like, unless you're like trading, like you're swing trading Forex to find a good place for your position, your entry points and your uh, exit points. So by looking at kind of smaller time frames, two, three minutes, you do see a double top here. And this is what I do want to see. Now, what's going to happen? I don't know. That's, um, that's why I said I don't really trust that. Although you could have played... We don't play news. Well, I personally don't play news. It's Friday plus it's news day. But you could have had buy stops and sell stops on either or of the candlesticks and see if it's going to hit or swing. I personally don't like doing that. So that's why I'd rather stay safe, preserve capital. It's a Friday. So um, let's look at other news. I actually like talking about the news. I'm going through my CFA stuff. Sorry, I'm going to bore you guys to death, but. 
hopefully you're le- finding some of this stuff educational as much as I am. I'm trying to make sure I retain what I learn. Okay. So, let's see here. Quicken Loans, Parent Rocket. Oh, yeah. So, this uh, company is owned by, I think, Daniel Gilbert. He's also the owner of the Cavs. That's why I know. Great, man. Um, crazy. Yeah, he's worth about $60 billion now because of this Rocket Company IPO. Let's actually take a look at this. Rocket. Rocket Companies, yeah. Oh, wow. What a tank. $32 billion market cap. Not much hype on this. I guess the one thing is to, since this stock just IPO'd, I don't know when, but. Uh, let me take a look here. Uh, what's the stock called? RKT. Yeah, okay. RKT, when did it start daily? So. So August 6th is when it started. Um, so yeah, I, I think, I don't know if the rule still applies in these types of markets anymore, but I'm pretty sure you can't stop uh, short a stock the first 90 days it comes out or something like that. I think that's post 2008. Uh, okay, let's look. Wow, look at that way. Are we going to see finally the true direction? Now, what we could be doing too is, as you can see, we have a level built in. And this is a big level, the 30-minute level. So if we see a candlestick, let's just say this flips bearish. That's the first indicator that, hey, maybe we, there are some shorts that we can take. Second is I want to see a formation of a candlestick around this area between 108 to 105. Is If it's a drop, we have this next level here which is more than 10 pips and I think that's a uh, that's better trade in my opinion anyways because we have the initial mixed news people are putting all these institutions are putting that information to their algorithms or in their uh, uh, models <laughs> yeah that's kind of mine so we're looking at long in the downside here and like I said long um, I think if we kind of have a break above this level here, then that we uh, are gonna get some momentum and then kind of have a push up to maybe the 40s level. I think, yeah, the 40s level is my next area. But until then, you're gonna see this is kind of in, first it's a Friday. I don't know how many times I'm gonna say this. You guys are probably bored of hearing me say it, but we have that. And then second of all, we have um, uh, the downside kind of move of what we're planning to do. Okay. Ant Group makes pre-listing. Ant Group, yes, Alibaba. A lot of people are doing IPOs. This is gonna be huge, Ant Group Financial. Um, so why I say, I, I know only very little, so I might be wrong. I just know that Ant Group Financial, right now anyways, uh, well, Alibaba is a huge retailer in China. Second of all, though, Ant has really had a major fintech kind of uh, footprint on the mobile devices uh, as a financial group or a financial institution. So, um, yeah, they 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 have their hands almost in everything, and I give. Uh, Kudos to Jack Ma. Jack Ma, I know you've stepped out of the spotlight now um, since he's not the chairman of uh, Alibaba and he's kind of stepped on the sidelines here. Um, but I, I think that that man's uh, destined to do a lot of great things too. And um, he's probably working and putting most of his focus on uh, a bit of uh, different side projects here. Um, and yeah, I think those side projects is going to maybe make a next push. Because I know right now, for the US and China, there's some tension, but I think that both countries understand the potential of space exploration. First and foremost, I think that, and it should be, I don't know, I hate sounding like a pessimist, that we need to find an alternative place to live not on Earth, just for the fact that I'm not saying Earth is not great, and I'm not saying I want to move to Mars. What I'm trying to say is that 
there's just too many people on this earth that we need to divest itself. And first, we've seen Mother Nature and how it can regrow itself actually fairly quickly. But uh, infestive, we Earth is basically plague. But the infestation, the infestation is caused by us because we don't really know how to manage it. Now, if I'm going to make a comparison, back 200 years ago, the natives, Native Americans that lived here, when they killed like a buffalo, for example, they used every single part of it, whether it be for weapons, medicine, food, clothing, they used that entire product product i think nowadays i mean yeah we're trying to reuse recycle and reduce but to that degree of care and focus on just like making sure we maximize the use for a product versus you know i mean nowadays look i'll just use appliances as an example back then i think appliances were definitely designed a lot better in the sense that it's actually not about design. I think companies purposely design now appliances to last five years, at most 10 years. Because before they were making appliances that last 20, 30 years. And guess what? Some people, but I guess their thought process was, hey, maybe some people, like when they move to a new home, they're going to get new appliances, stuff like that. So they're going to keep buying. They didn't because they want to keep using the same stove that's worked perfectly for them for the last 20 years. So with that in mind, you think that, hey, um, we're gonna have to design these to not last as long so then we can have people keep buying and buying these appliances every 10 years, five to 10 years, right? So that's to increase their sales in a sense, right? But appliances, yeah, they've definitely gone from quality to quantity. So kind of back to the topic, I got sidetracked here. Um, but yeah, that kind of goes back to the point of what I'm trying to say is that um, we're not kind of, we're polluting this earth. Everyone knows we're polluting this earth. We're not we're not caring for earth as much as we should have uh, of first of all. And with the amount of humans we have on this earth, I think that's if we started on the right foot. I had set that kind of footprint to do that, like care about the earth as much as we are starting to do that now with the ESG funds, environment, so uh, socially and good governance funds. Um, is it too late? Maybe it is. Um, but space exploration too, one thing I want to see anyways coming from space exploration is maybe not moving to Mars, but I think that most of our heavy metals mining and all that, that in itself is polluting Earth. But I think that all that mining, if we can uh, do that not on Earth, but in space, where the economic effects are zero, since basically space is a, a void in itself, I think that's going to be a lot more beneficial for the world. That's one thing, because no matter what, we'll always need minerals. I mean, I think moon would probably have quite a bit. Don't forget, guys, the moon is actually, from my knowledge, is a part of Earth. Uh, apparently, when Earth was developing, um, a big comet hit Earth, broke a chunk of Earth. And then that is the moon. And then that chunk of Earth, obviously, Earth still was a lot bigger than the moon. Actually, how big is the moon? How many things can we fit into? Fifty. Oh. So yeah, obviously, the Earth is such a great size that the moon's obviously a circle around us for the fact that our gravitational pull is a lot stronger but that so 1 50th so two percent of the size of the earth which is still relatively big we can start mining there and seeing if we can find all, like all the metals all the heavy manufacturing and uh, mining if we can do it on somewhere that moon. another thing is not only on the moon we do have an asteroid belt surrounding um, or in our solar system per se that has many 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 minerals in there so I think that's another um, key fact that maybe we can see oh are we gonna 
break out. We have an initial liquidity grab, and if it's gonna break out, it has to grab all the orders down here first before launching itself into space. Um, yeah, I'm gonna probably wait until uh, at least a five minute forms there. 30 minute looks good. Yeah, we have a final push up. Five minutes. Good. Yeah. Well, that was my rant of the day. Um, reuse, reduce, recycle. Okay, I am going to. I'm going to wait. Yeah, I think it's serious to see a push up here too. I'm gonna go quarter of a position. Yeah, yeah I'm gonna go quarter of a position. It's, it's honestly, um, it's Friday, so I don't really want to push. I'll go quarter of a position. Uh, once this candlestick closes, the five minute candlestick closes, and then. We'll see. We'll see if it breaks up higher. Uh, my stops would be 10 pips. There's the reason also why if you look at the 10 minute and the 5 minutes, it's found support at this level here at 17. And it's already had a sell off, grabbing orders and stuff. I'm going to have 10 pip up and down. And um, see, it's going to fill the wick here. Or it's going to right now. but. I mean, I think it's more confirmation. I mean, the t ultimate TB is to be, uh, was it 118.40s areas? This is kind of what we see. Um, I mean, now I can't believe in the move more than this previous one. I had a feeling this was going to be a fake out and then, then kind of go back to the long side here. Um, daily kind of proves it. And then daily, we're on the upper range here. And do I think we're going to fill this wick? Yeah, I do think we're going to fill this wick. Look at that, what a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful move. So yeah, just run a quarter position in, just gonna test the waters here. Uh, it's gonna be 10 pips up and down, honestly. I'm not trying to hit home runs here. Um, yeah. Let's see. Actually, I'm gonna have a runner. Two. Alright, so stop loss I'm gonna have here is gonna be um, around the 20s area. I don't think it's gonna go back down after that initial move, but it'll be 10 pips or 10 pips, right? So my average price is around 28, so my stop loss would be at 18, but let's just say uh, stop loss is at 18, 18, 18. And then TP will be 1, 18, 32. Uh, yeah, well, that's a trade. Is it going to push up higher? I'll I hope so. <laughs> I hope so. So a quarter position plus some, um, I added, actually, so I went 30%, so 5% is to be a runner. And then, I don't know, the rest we're just gonna chill out and see. But I, mean, I think this is really the only trade I'm gonna take for today. It's, uh, like I said, I'm not really gonna hammer hard on this. Uh, that was good news, bad news, good news, every news type of deal um we got mixed news today but that mixed news at least produced a so sell off here on the, i mean this is a small time frame let me go ahead a small time frame we had a little bit of a sell off here great grab some liquidity and uh it's what we need the push up and yeah this candlestick i really think with this strength to carry forward we're gonna easily get in 1840s now can we have a potential to reach 50s probably i mean that's only 18 pips from now um but i'm just for now i think the first target should be 40 i'm gonna get my core position out of there first and then uh let the runner run as we always say so just gonna chill out and i'm actually gonna go make coffee so i hope i don't get stopped out when i come back
why don't you go up? Break or pull back down. Like I said, guys, my stop is at 118.18. If it drops down, then it drops down. I gotta send him out early. Pushing hard on this attack. I just like to take some time. Better entries was uh, yeah my stops at 25 because I would have been out by then. Instead of entering once the five minute count will close, this is the second time is there a retest. I think was the push and pushed up here. Yeah, when it broke here, I should have put a buy stop at like 26, 25, 9. At least then I would broken even this trade. But we go down with the ship, we trust our analysis, and if it goes up, it goes up, it goes down, it goes down. That's why we don't bet the bank. All right, let us take a look at some other stuff. Done talking about the moon, let's talk about something else. We work gets new. Oh wow, another one point. This guy's just digging himself in the hole. One point one billion dollars has slash who? It's just insane how like why? Why would you invest more in We Work when? Why would you invest more in We Work when, due to COVID, we're shifting away from office space and it's going to be more work from home or kind of like. Unless they have a design of, let's just say, for example, they're going to design an office space where it's more open in that sense, like space, like from desk to desk. But I don't know. It's just COVID's not going anywhere unless we were can buy office space for cheap. I don't really see where this is going to go. Is if, off, if they can't buy cheap office space. And right now they're just basically yeah, the office space game is kinda kinda weird to me at this point to try. Uh, but what do I know? Uh, let's see here. Well, it's almost to close. What shall you do, markets? I still anticipate this because if you look at the 30 minutes, my stop is basically when it flips bullish. I mean, if it flips bullish, then by all means, uh, this trade idea is wrong. But if it stays relatively here, I mean, I think we can uh, we can push back up a little bit further. But we'll give this trade a shot, give it some time for a breather, and if you get stopped out, you get stopped out. Map up the trade and just go with the flow. Okay, let's see now.
Drive me insane. Why you gotta do me like that? Do me like that. Do me like that. Okay, I'm gonna have to be right back. US market open do anything. Does not look like it. Uh, oh, at least a 30 minute closed. Are we gonna get a wick down before a wick up? Probably. Man, just stop. Chart here. Ladies and gentlemen, this is what it looks like to get stopped out.
watch me get stopped up first though. Hopefully this is the wick of the 30 to push higher. Yeah, let's hope for that. Da, 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 da. Let's go. What's Malta? I have no idea who they are. Malta, wow, country in Europe. It's an island? Where's Russia? What? Interesting. Very interesting. Oh, nice. Nice, it's pushing up, guys. I might not get stopped out. <laughs> uh, that's funny. I don't know no more. Okay, let's talk about something else. Oh, I don't even have. Do I have motivational quotes for today? Yes, I do. All right. Let's, let's see. The best people is the one who humbles himself. The more his rank increases. To share your weakness is to make yourself vulnerable. To make yourself vulnerable is to show your strength. By Chris. Chris Jammy, if I'm pronouncing that correctly, probably not. If you guys haven't heard where I get these motivational quotes, is the Motivation app. So, anyone's interested. Actually, I want to read more about this SoftBank thing we were talking about it earlier, but sometimes it's just cool to understand why. Revenue this quarter reached. 9% increase from real. Okay, that's good then. It's a good sign. Oh, no. Loud. Okay, our efforts streamline cash consciousness organization. Okay. Don't worry guys, I'll let you guys know when I get stopped up. <laughs> okay. We work the quarter six times in full members of which way reserve from prize enterprise customer businesses. So when they come in, yeah. Man, 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 they should have gone through the IPO. That's good though, that they can turn the cash flows positive. I guess COVID hit a dent with that. Or they're doing some accounting mastery. Oh wow, two hundred 
106 stats in your brokerage accounts and up 14% off. I mean, it makes sense. A lot of people are starting to trade now and buy stocks. I think a lot of this rally is also because you have COVID, everyone's not at work, so then maybe they start dabbling in something new. So it's interesting. The trends. You try to find news or anything on importance to or importance for discussion anyways. And here comes the pain. Uh, let's keep analyzing here. Five minute, yeah, doesn't look too too good. Broke back below the 25 level now. 10 minutes looks plumb below. Five minutes, 10, 15. Yeah, we had probably a, it feels like almost a liquidity grab off the side. And then now it's going down, 20 minutes. Yeah, couldn't break through this. So, a I guess this, this is it, this 30 level, 27 level. Yeah, very choppy today, honestly. Um, typically, I think on a Tuesday, Thursday, you would have seen just a clean break upwards to 40s, no problem. Like, look at how nice the moves were um, yesterday, the day before. I mean, yeah, this was awful, but. Oh, now it's deciding to kind of push back up. One thing is that it did make a low at 20. It touched the supply area that we have drawn out. And um, I guess there's some supply there or demand, sorry. So if this kind of closes bullish, I mean, in about a minute's time, that's gonna be a great sign. Um, but yeah, that we found support at this level here at 24 and then push up. But I mean, right now, I just wanna say that we aren't in uh, a tug of war of some sorts. Um, and it's not very obvious unless you go higher time frames who's winning. Like 30 minutes, yeah, it's looking a bit better. So we, if you can imagine this, we flip from bearish to bullish again. So I think that now this, we might have a wick fill now. But um, I mean, right now I'm in a core position. Do I want to enter more? Probably not. Would I have entered more if this was just? Regular Tuesday or Thursday. If I hadn't go full, full, full position, I probably would have entered a little bit below. Because honestly, you have to think to yourself that when it was close to my stop, like if I added my other half position, honestly, how bad of the loss would have been? It would have been two pips on the other half of the position. Um, I mean, you do the math. If we're typically trying to get. 10 pips. Two pips is only 20% of what I would have usually lost if I had gone full position at $28, uh, at eighteen twenty-eight. So, I mean, you still save about eight pips um, for your trade, but yeah. We have the US dollar, I mean, the US markets, QQQ pushing back up. That's always a good sign. Start drawing some lines just for later to do my analysis on. But yeah, this QQQ is very interesting. Well, at least we see it. We've seen it close bullish. It's respecting this level. It's consolidating at the very least. I mean, if I get stopped, though, like I said, it is what it is. But you see bullish I mean you might see this as the lower wick here the lower wick might extend to 22 but then you'll see a push up if we do have a push up here I think we're gonna close around the 1830 levels here and then you'll see a continuation because this is kind of a liquidity grab we needed uh, but we'll see 10 minutes is still for, uh, a small chart time frame I should say Yeah, you look at the one minute, we found some support there. Two minutes, three minutes, oops. Three minutes. Uh, three minutes doesn't look good. Five minutes. Oh. 
two, or is he going to break that? That might break. This will be my only trade, by the way, everyone. Um, you know, it's something I'm going to have to do at eight-ish, so I'll have to do that. And it's the weekend. Isn't that exciting? Actually, I don't really look forward to weekends much just for the fact that the markets are closed. But that's why we have simulation. So if you are worried about getting rusty, go on TradingView, open an account, sign up for their packaging. I'm not really promoting them, but you see, I use them too. I have all the software packages or charting software packages I've used. I've quite uh, enjoyed this myself here. And yeah, um, and then you simulate and you practice and you get better. You get better. So this is kind of uh, QQQ is in the range. Oh, for goodness sake, zero is in the range too. So yeah, I think the, the initial move here, when it dropped, yeah, I think the buy stops like even above here, like these previous wicks would have been good enough. Just get yourself out of this position, honestly. I think the main thing was to get yourself out of this position or have an ideal entry points where, you know what, you're up 10 pips, um, call it a day, go home. I mean, not go home, <laughs> you're already home, just call it a day. Okay, well, oh wow, what a push up. Uh, let's go, I'm almost break even, everyone. Woohoo! It only took forever. Okay, well, it might bore you guys to death, so I'm just actually gonna study, read my cue cards for equities component for the CFA. <gasps> And while I look at the markets to see if it's going to actually go up, or is this just another mind game that I like to play on before it goes down? And when I say play mind games with me, I don't mean really just me. It's everyone that's participating in the markets. This is just a game like everything else. Sustainable growth. G equals ROE times RR. Wow. Pratt model. Sorry, I'm just gonna not say this. I'm I'm boring myself just speaking this out loud so I can imagine everyone listening. One thing I should also mention is at 30 minutes, if this doesn't break and it doesn't make this uh, bullish candlestick, 30 minutes doesn't break higher above, then it might be an indication that this long has lost steam. Uh, I might get rid of half a position, I don't know. Depends on how it closes. I might get um, rid of half a position and yeah, reduce risk. And then honestly, if, if it runs, it runs. If it doesn't. Is what it is, but just an FYI, everyone.
we find a structure this looks okay. I mean, we have higher lows and then higher highs. I mean, I hope this closes bullish and then hopefully with this clo closing bullish above this zone, it's respecting this and we have some demand here that we're gonna see push up. <laughs> and a push out to get me out of this trade. So we have about 10 more minutes on the 30. Let's get the 20 here. Now, can this momentum sustain itself? Can we get that push up to the 38? I hope so, so then I can break even my uh, my trade. But like I said, like you see a, a build up of momentum. We have the initial sell off. Like this is the ideal, easy, quick trade. This is slow and steady. One thing is this five minute candle does not have a wick, which is kind of not good. If, well, maybe I'll develop a wick now. But if it doesn't, then typically two things. If this doesn't have a lower wick and it's falling on smaller time frames, or if you are trading on candlesticks that don't have a lower wick, it's either one of two things. It's either this is gonna make the push up that you're looking for, or this is gonna push up to probably, and what I'm worried about is this could be essentially a double top, and then it's gonna uh, push back down, creates a lower wick, fail breakout, test this level, and then go back down. So it's either or. Uh, per se. I mean, obviously I'm biased and I hope it's in a first fill the previous 30 minute wick, which it looks like it's going to here, but break past this to 38, get me hit my TP and get me out of this trade essentially. So now I can break even my previous trade and then uh, call it a day for today. But uh, we'll see. We'll see what the market wants to give us and the markets don't want to give us anything. But like I said, that's the one thing I'm worried about is that lower wick that was not created. Come on, smash right through this resistance area. You can do it, Yoro. Let's see, ah, markets are dropping. Wow, filled the wick. I might look for shorts. Oh, it broke. Can I give me two more pips, everyone? Two more pips. Oh, another mo motivational quote. Be a rainbow in someone else's cloud. Nice. All right, well, I don't know if it's gonna do that per se honestly i'm gonna break even this trade so we were about two pips away from my trade if it's in a break it's in a break if it goes back down then i mean by all means it's gonna go back down uh, this is a break stop losses break even this trade call it a day I i'm gonna pay even the commission because i don't really care at this point This, I gotta go at eight. We had an initial break up. Do I think so? You know what? Since why not take some profits out of this? Uh, yeah, it's gonna stop out. Okay. I just took some profits out. You know. Um, do I think it's a breakup? I hope so. But the thing is, we didn't get that lower wick. Wick is what kind of I'm worried about. Even on the five minute, even on the one minute. There, uh, that's... but I have my runner still. Um, if that gets stopped out, I get stopped out. But yeah, I don't really care at this point. Wait, how much did I punch out for? Yeah, I punched out for four pips on the core position. Obviously, it went up to 36, two pips away. I'm gonna be counting pennies. No, on that.
30 minute, 5 minute close. Oh, are we going to get this push to fill the way? I'm not sure. call it a day everyone uh, my runner is set to break even uh, covering commissions and uh, if it goes it goes I already punched out at 32 with the core position um, yeah well if you like the stream like the calls like the setups like the chat about the news um, hit a like and uh, like to this video and subscribe to the channel also, check out our website, JenkoInstituteForTrading.com, and our emails are there as well, so if you have any questions or concerns, feel free to email us, uh, and then we'll have a chat. All right, everyone take care, and uh, safe trading, and have a great weekend. I'll see you next Monday. Actually, no, we'll see you this weekend when we do some simulations. All right, take care, everyone.